All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about deriving the vertex formula. So that's going to allow us to take a quadratic function. So something like f of x is equal to, let's say, ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're specifically going to state here that a, the coefficient of x squared, is not zero. So let's write that there. We're going to go into the vertex form. So the vertex form. And for that one, we're going to say that f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Again, I'll specifically say here that a is not equal to zero. And the reason we want this form here is that if we have it, we immediately know the vertex occurs at h comma k. So let me write, so the vertex would occur at h comma k. And the axis of symmetry, sometimes we just say the axis to make it shorter, would occur at x equals h. So let me just write axis here and I'll put x equals h. Now, how can you go from this to this? Well, you can complete the square, but that process is very tedious. So we rely on something called the vertex formula to do this quickly. So with the vertex formula, let me write that out. So the vertex formula, let me fix my O here. We're gonna end up figuring out that your h, which is this right here, is equal to negative b over 2a. So you're just grabbing the information from this one right here. And then your k is really just f of h, if you want to do it that way. Or you can say it's c minus your b squared over 4a. So whether you want to do it like this, or whether you want to do f of h, either way, that's going to give you your k. All right, so in order to derive the vertex formula, let's again start with f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And of course, a is not allowed to be equal to zero. I'm not going to write that, but we should know that. But it can be any other real number that you want. Now, the idea here is we're going to complete the square. And remember the idea behind completing the square. You're trying to create a perfect square trinomial. That way you can factor that into a binomial squared. Because at the end of the day, you want something that looks like this. So f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So creating a perfect square trinomial and factoring it into a binomial squared is how you get this part right here. So what you would do is just group your variable terms together. So you could just wrap them in parentheses. And then you want to actually factor your a out. And the reason you're going to do that is because the coefficient for x squared needs to be one if you're completing the square. So let me write this as f of x is equal to. So we're pulling the a out. So this is a times the quantity. You would have x squared there. And then plus, how do I undo multiplication by a? I would divide by a. So b divided by a, you could just write b over a like that. And then you have times your x like that. And then we'll close this back down. And then we have plus c. Now, when we complete the square, remember, you're looking at the coefficient for x raised to the first power. In this case, that's b over a. And what you want to do is you want to cut it in half, meaning multiply by half, and then square it. So we're going to say b over a times one half. And we're going to square that. So this is b over, this would be 2a. Let me fix this a. It looks a little bit weird. And this is going to be squared like that. So using the rules of exponents, this would be b squared over 2 squared times a squared. So this becomes b squared over 2 squared is 4 and then times a squared. Let me fix this. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of this. What you're going to do is add this on the inside of the parentheses and that will actually give you a perfect square trinomial x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared would be a perfect square trinomial. But you can't just go around adding things without compensating for that. So what we're going to end up doing is adding and then subtracting. So let me show you that. We're going to go f of x is equal to a times the quantity x squared plus b over ax. And then plus, again, I'm going to add this. So b squared over 4a squared. So let me get rid of this. But now I need to compensate for the fact that I added this in here. So what I'm going to do is just subtract it away. So I'm just going to go minus b squared over 4a squared. And we'll close down the parentheses there. And you have your plus c. Let's stop for a moment. Did I do anything illegal? No. I just added b squared over 4a squared. And then I subtracted it away. So minus b squared over 4a squared. This right here, if you look at it, is zero. So I haven't done anything illegal. So what I'm going to do now is get this guy by itself. So this is my perfect square trinomial. To do that, remember I have parentheses here. So I can't just move this outside of the parentheses because A is multiplying this guy. So what you would do to simplify here is write this as f of x is equal to A times the quantity x squared plus B over AX plus B squared over 4A squared. Let me make these bigger. 
And then I'm gonna close this down like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say that this A is being distributed to this. So you could say minus A times B squared over 4A squared. And then you have your plus C. Now let me copy this. Okay, so coming down here, what we wanna do is factor the perfect square trinomial. So let's write this as f of x is equal to, this would be a times the quantity. Remember how this works, you're gonna put x here, this would be a plus, and then you wanna take the guy that you use. So when we had b over a, remember we cut it in half, we multiplied it by one half. So b over a times one half. So before we squared it, we had b over two a. So that's what you're gonna use right here. So we're gonna use b over two a. And this would be quantity squared. Now, if you want to stop and check that, we can. This would be x squared plus 2 times x times b over 2a. And of course, the 2s would cancel. So this would be x times b over a. So let's write b over a x. And then plus this last guy squared. So b squared would be in the numerator. And the denominator 2 squared is 4. And then a squared is a squared. So this right here matches this right here x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared. Let's get rid of this. And now let's cancel this with one of these. And you're going to have minus b squared over 4a and then plus c. If you want to match this to your vertex form, what you would do is you would change this over into minus a negative. So you would write this as f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus a negative b over 2a quantity squared. And then you could rewrite this to say plus c minus b squared over 4a. So let me get rid of this. And now this is a match. So bring this up here. And basically we're done. So this right here is going to match up with this right here. So you can state that h is equal to negative b over 2a. And then this right here, this c minus b squared over 4a, that's going to match that right there. So you can say that your k is equal to c minus b squared over 4a. Now, you can also just find f of h if you want. So a lot of books will say k is equal to f of h. So that's up to you what you want to do. Okay, so let's just do one example. We'll complete the square and then we'll use the vertex formula just so we can see the difference. So to complete the square, let's go f of x is equal to, again, I'm going to group these guys together. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to pull out the 3. So inside you'd have x squared minus. So 12 divided by three is four. So this would be four x. And then you have plus 13 here. And so now you would have f of x is equal to three times the quantity x squared minus four x. So again, I wanna cut this in half. So negative four times one half. And then I wanna square that. So this right here would end up being negative two. So negative two squared and that equals four. So what you wanna do is you wanna add four, and then you want to immediately subtract four away, and then close down the parentheses. Again, this right here is just zero, so you're not really doing anything illegal. Then you're gonna have your plus 13 like that. So now what I'm gonna do is say this is f of x is equal to three times the quantity x squared, and then minus four x plus four. I'll close this down, and now again, this three has to be distributed to the negative four, so let's put minus, three times four would be 12, and then you have plus 13. So this can just be combined here, so negative 12 plus 13 is gonna be positive one. Let me actually copy this, because we would definitely run out of room. So let me write f of x is equal to three times the quantity x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then this would be plus 1 here. Now, you can factor this into a binomial squared, so you get f of x is equal to 3 times the quantity, so this would factor into x minus 2, so x minus 2, quantity squared, and then plus 1. So I guess it's not that bad to complete the square, but I'm going to show you how you could have gotten this much more quickly using the other approach. So let me just use this right here. Let me go back up. Let me grab that and put it here. So we learned that essentially to get h, which in this case is 2, it's h is equal to negative b over 2a. Well, again, this is a, this is b, and let's go plus negative to make that clear and this is c. So the negative of b would be the negative of negative 12. Make sure you don't make a mistake when you're plugging in there. Then this is over 2 times a, a is 3. So this equals, again, the negative of negative 12 is positive 12, and this is over 2 times 3 is 6, and 12 over 6 is 2. So that's how we know there's a 2 that's going in right there. Don't make a mistake with that negative because the negative is baked in when we look at this. Again, when we come back up here, this is h right there. The negative is baked in. Now, if you want k, again, you have different options for that. Again, we figured out that h is equal to 2. Well, you could just find f of 2. 
So f of 2 is 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2, and then plus 13. Well, let's start with 2 squared, that's going to be 4. And then 3 times 4 would be 12. So this equals 12, and then minus 12 times 2 is 24, and then plus 13. Well, we know that 12 plus 13, that's going to be 25. So this is basically negative 24 plus 25, which is positive 1. Let's say this is equal to 1. And of course, that's what we see right here, that the k value is 1. All right, so one main benefit to writing a quadratic function in vertex form is going to be for graphing. So looking at f of x equals 3 times the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 1, I immediately know, if I'm going to sketch the graph, that the vertex is going to occur at h comma k. Well, h is 2 and k is 1. So 2 comma 1, that's where I'm going to have my vertex. In terms of my axis of symmetry, so I'm just going to write axis here. Again, that's at x equals h. So h is 2, so it's x equals 2. Now you can draw that in if you want. So this right there would be x equals 2. Again, that's your axis of symmetry. And if you wanted to get some points, again, you could easily use graphing transformations. So let's just think about what's happening. If you compare this to something like, let's say y equals x squared, or you could do g of x equals x squared. Well, there would be this 3 right here that would give you a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Let me fix this. Then on the inside right here, you have minus 2. So on the inside for horizontal transformations, you undo things. So here you would need to add 2 to undo that. So that means I'm going to shift 2 units right. And then right here, you have this plus 1 that's on the outside. So that's going to be a vertical shift up by 1 unit. So let's say shift one unit up. So think about a point that's on, again, y equals x squared. You could say g of x equals x squared. You have something that's, let's say, negative one comma one. Well, what's that going to go to? Well, in terms of the x value here, we're going to shift two units right. So negative one plus two, that's going to be positive one. In terms of the y value here, you can have a vertical stretch by a factor of three. So we're going to have one times three, and then we're going to shift one unit up. So then we're going to add one to that. So one times three is three, and then three plus one is four. So that's going to give me the point one comma four, which I have right there. And then similarly, if I wanted to look at, let's say one comma one, well, for my x, I'm going to shift two units right. So one plus two would be three. And then for my y, again, I'm going to multiply by three first, then add one second. So one times three is three, then three plus one would be four. So that's going to give me this point 3, 4 right there. So that's one benefit to writing things in vertex form. Again, you're normally going to see this in your chapter where you're graphing quadratic functions.